Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Good morning from Lahore, Pakistan. And Assalamu alaikum. I am Professor Javed Iqbal Kokar, Professor of Forensic Medicine and Toxicology. As I've decided in the previous lecture, in the introductory lecture, that I'll be starting a series of drowning lectures. So starting from today, this will be the first lecture on drowning. So the learning objective of this lecture will be that I will be defining what is drowning, and what actually happens in drowning, and then what is the mechanism and process of drowning. Then what are various types, that is the classification, that is the typical and the non-typical or atypical. The typical is, so starting with the topic, this is the first lecture of the series on drowning. Drowning is a form of asphyxial death. So first of all, we should understand that drowning is an asphyxial death in which the access of air to the lungs is prevented by submersion of the body in water or any other fluid. So that means the air passages, they are replaced by water or any other fluid in, in which the body is immersed. And that's why it is called as asphyxial death. So drowning is a form of asphyxial death, whereas air is replaced by the drowning fluid. Young children are especially at risk because they can drown in less than two inches of water. Only six centimeters of water is sufficient for a small child to get drowned. And this means that drowning can happen anywhere and at places where you would least expect it, like the sinks, the toilets, the toilet bowl, bucket in the toilet, fountains, and inflatable pools. So we can never think of, but these are the places where usually the accidents happen because of our negligence, because of our ignorance, and the small children, they are usually victim of these places. So small bodies of water standing around your home such as ditches, which may be filled with rainwater, can also be the place of drowning. And this is important, that complete submersion is not necessary. It is not necessary that body is completely submerged because only sufficient fluid, which covers the nostrils and the mouth, which covers the nostrils and the mouth, that is only required. Because unconsciousness in head injuries, epileptics and alcohol in these victims, it has been seen that because of their incapacitation because of these diseases, when they fall in small amount of water and they sink their nose and mouth in that water, they get drowned. So drowning is defined as a respiratory impairment as a result of being in or under a fluid or liquid. Drowning is very painful because once the person is under water, the average person normally it takes between 30 to 60 seconds to run out of air. That means the air which is present within the lungs, they unintentionally, they breathe in water and they rid of the air in the lungs in just 30 to 60 seconds. And this will hurt and you are likely to go unconscious soon after this. This happens so suddenly that 
the person goes unconscious suddenly and drowning typical occurs typically it occurs silently with only a few people able to wave their hands or call for help they do not get enough time as the symptoms they can even follow this is important that these symptoms can even follow after rescuing that if you rescue some person from drowning they can get fatal symptoms like breathing problems vomiting confusion and unconsciousness the drowning medium can be any usually it is water like the lakes the river the sea or any other substance like oil dye or any other chemical substance now about the types or the classification regarding the classification it is said as typical drowning which is also known as wet drowning then there are atypical drowning so two major types or classifications that is the typical and the atypical drowning the typical drowning it indicates that obstruction of air passages of the lungs is by means of inhalation of the fluid and that's why it is called as wet drowning that mean water or fluid actually enters into the respiratory passages the atypical drowning in these types or in these conditions in which there is very little water or even no inhalation of water or the fluid into the respiratory passages takes place then the atypical drowning it includes the dry drowning and the immersion syndrome which is the vagal inhibition or the submersion of unconscious none of the atypical signs in this type of drowning at autopsy are found then a near drowning which is also called as secondary drowning syndrome and basically these are the complications after the resuscitation the person is rescued and there are complications and that is called near drowning so thank you very much this is about the first lecture of this series of drowning i'll continue my topic in the next lecture take care allah fe please subscribe to my channel and this is my channel name dr javed ikbal kokhar